I'm Sergeant First Class Pitts from the Maryland Army National Guard. Today we're going to talk about the use of geometry and trigonometry to solve some everyday problems. So I'm building a roof here on my house and in order to do that I have two fairly straightforward geometry problems to solve. One is the angle and the length of the rafter which forms a hypotenuse of a right triangle and the second is whether or not the roof itself is square and parallel to the existing house. So in order to do that we're going to use a little bit of Pythagorean theorem and a little bit of sine and cosine and tangent. In order to determine if the roof is parallel and square to the existing building we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Basically what that means is we're going to use a right triangle to determine whether or not the building is square. So I've established two reference points. One is the short A side of the triangle, and the other is the longer B side base of the triangle. And that side is parallel to the existing house. Looking at it from above, you can now see a little bit better the two sides of the triangle, the B side or the base, and the A side or the short side. We're gonna use something called a three, four, five triangle to determine whether or not this is square. What that means is that by the Pythagorean theorem, any triangle that has three units on the, sh on the A side, four units on the B side, will have five units on the hypotenuse. So this triangle will have nine feet on the A side, which is three times three feet. 12 feet on the B side, which is three times four feet, and should have 15 feet on the hypotenuse, which is three times five feet. In order to do this correctly, you have to make sure that you're using uniform reference points. So in this case, I'm gonna use the inside of the boards that I've marked out as the triangle as the reference point. For the A side, I've measured out nine feet from the intersection of the two boards, and I've made a mark on the inside at the nine foot. Again, using the inside of the reference board, I've measured out 12 feet, three times the four foot unit of measure. And I've marked out the 12 foot mark again on the inside of the board. Using my tape measure to measure between the two points I've already marked on the A and B sides of the triangle, you can see that the hypotenuse is 15 feet long, which means that it is a true right triangle and has a 90 degree angle or a square at the intersection of the two short sides of the triangle. Now, if that measurement looked more like this and it was too long, that would mean that it was a greater than 90 degree angle and I would need to move one of the two reference points and if it was looked like that, that would mean that it was less than a 90 degree angle. And I would also have to move the reference points, but in a different direction. Now that we used the Pythagorean theorem and a three, four, five triangle to make sure that the reference points are square and also parallel to the building, I can use them as a basis to make all my future measurements, ensuring that the entire roof will be square. So now we've set the conditions to solve the second problem, which is the angle and the length of the rafters. I've established a level surface for the rafters to sit on at the front with a load-bearing beam across what will be a window later. In the back, I've established a level board to rest the rafters on, and I've calculated how high the rafters need to go to meet the existing roof properly. So I've created another triangle. What I have to do is I have to measure the A side and the B side so that I can calculate the length of the hypotenuse and also the angle that the rafters need to be cut at. In order to calculate the B side, I have to decide what points I'm going to use for reference. So in this case, I'm gonna use the point at which the lower side of the rafter touches 
the load bearing beam. And I will use the inside face of the framing that's holding up the rafter. By measuring between those two points, I can calculate the length of the B side. Using a level, I've traced the line that extends up from where the rafter touches the beam. I'm then going to use my tape measure to measure to that line. The B side length is 165 and a quarter inches. To establish the A side of the triangle, I'm going to use a laser level to establish a reference line and then measure up to the high point of the triangle and down to the low point of the triangle from the reference line and add those two measurements together, which will give me the length of the A side. So measuring up from the reference line is 30 inches to the top of the triangle. Measuring down from the laser re reference line, I came up with 15 and 3 quarters inches for a total of 45 and 3 quarters inches for the A side of the triangle. Now I have all the information I need to find the angle and the length of the rafter using the lengths of the A and B sides. Looking at the tangent formula, it's the opposite divided by the adjacent side. So we divide 45.75 by 165.25 coming up with 0.2768 which we use the tangent function and it comes out with 15.47 degrees. To find the length use the Pythagorean theorem. We square the A side and add it to the square of the B side and then find the square root which gives us 171.4661 inches. So we're going to round those numbers off because for the purpose of construction it doesn't have to be that detailed. So 15.47 degrees gets rounded to 15 and a half degrees. And 1 16th of an inch equals about 0 0.0625. So 171.466 is less than a 16th of an inch from 171 and a half. So we're just going to use 171 and a half as the length of the rafter. So behind me, you can see the finished roof. From using a little practical application of geometry and trigonometry, I was able to solve the problems and build the roof successfully. Throughout my career, both in the Army and in the construction business, I've had to use these skills. Thanks, and have a great day.